Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here at the OIS meeting today and um, look forward to talking to you a little bit about our light-based uh, mitochondrial targeted uh, treatment for dry AMD. The company is a Seattle, Washington-based company. We've been targeting dry uh, age-related macular degeneration. We use uh, what's called photobiomodulation or light therapy-based. It's actually successfully used and approved in other indications and has a good history. It's a, um, uh, a technique in which we use multiple wavelengths to stimulate mitochondrial function at the retinal level. We've done three clinical trials, and we'll talk about the Light Site 1 trial. As of the end of June, we received our CE mark in uh, Europe and uh, are starting to um, uh, conduct additional multicenter trials there as well as looking at planning those in the United States. We've got a broad patent uh, population covering both devices and methods for uh, uh, ocular damage and disease as well as dry AMD specifically. So this is the Valeda. It's an instrument. Uh, the name means uh, strength and health. And that's exactly what we're trying to do, is strengthen the mitochondrial uh, function to improve health of the retinal cells. It's a multiple wavelength instrument that treats um, in about uh, four minutes per eye. We do the treatments. We basically uh, do a series of treatments over the course of three or four weeks. The patient uh, can do both treatments or treat both eyes in less than 10 minutes. There's no pupil dilation. Uh, the patients can come in and, and uh, receive treatment and leave. The Light Site 1 study is the first randomized prospective uh, double mast uh, study using photobiomodulation in dry AMD patients. And it was partially funded by the National Eye Institute. There were 30 patients that were enrolled, and we uh, can uh, load a randomization table on the instrument. So they were uh, distributed in both either active PBM treatment or a sham treatment, which in this case is a light therapy, but it's about 100-fold less than the active dose, so it's really low and high dose. The patients were either um, uh, identified both as having dry AMD by OCT, as well as uh, they had to have a vision uh, within 2040 to 2200 uh, to be eligible for the study. There were a total of 46 eyes that were in the intent to treat, and most of those patients were in ARIDS categories three and four, um, with over 60% uh, having geographic atrophy at some level. The time to diagnosis was about eight years, and uh, overall similar distribution between both groups. When we looked at the number of patients that gave us at least a five-letter gain uh, over the course of the treatment, and the treatment was three times a week for over three to four weeks, uh, it's a little bit like muscle training. We want to repeat treat and stimulate the cells and improve their overall health. We also were looking at this study as a way to look at a retreatment uh, period. We know that this is a therapy and that the benefits are not uh, going to be a single time and, and gone. Uh, what we saw was about 50% of the patients showed an improvement of at least five letters or, or more at the first uh, end of the first month of treatment. That maintained till about six months when we saw it drop to about 37, 38%. We came back in and treated them at six to seven month time period, uh, regained uh, improvement in best corrective visual acuity, and by about 12 months at the end of the study, they were ready for another treatment. When we look a little deeper at uh, the subset of those patients that were high responders and how they correlated to stage a disease, we saw a very uh, nice correlation between the uh, OCT uh, stage of disease as well as their uh, response to photobiomodulation. If the patients had a high responder in which they saw about eight to six letters at either month one or month seven, uh, those patients, 92% of them did have, had no geographic atrophy in the central foveola. Contrast that those patients that didn't respond as well clearly had a significant amount of geographic atrophy in the central foveola, about 83%. And so what this allows us to do is monitor and be able to look at the patient's degree and stage of disease and give the patients and the doctors some indication of how well they would respond to photobiomodulation treatment. In addition to the improvements that we saw in BCVA, we saw improvements in contrast sensitivity. Uh, these were in the high-performing patients over the course of the 12 months. We saw a very nice reduction in drusen in the sham uh, or PBM uh, low-dose treatments. We saw an increase in uh, drusen over the course of the year, where 70% of the patients showed a reduction in drusen. And this is shown here with one of our best patients. You can see a significant amount of central drusen 
and at 12 months after two of the PBM sessions, a very nice reduction in central uh, Drusen volume. Geographic atrophy did not change between the two groups over the time of uh, 12 months. Uh, to circle back around, we also looked at the VFQ uh, qu uh, questionnaire and saw improvement, uh, significant improvement in the composite score at three, six, seven, and nine months and trending at 12, and actually improvements in activities of daily living and comments from the patients as well unmasked that the PBM treatment was working in their visual field function. And so we just got our uh, CE mark. We presented uh, a symposium on PBM and the mitochondrial-based uh, targeted therapy at the Uretina meeting about a month ago. We're starting to look at our European multi-center registry studies as well as the U.S. companion study that's under planning. And yesterday we announced a distribution channel partnership with Optos to help monitor and test and treat these patients for 12 European and Scandinavian countries. Uh, we are very excited to be here today and hope that we will uh, be here at uh, several more meetings and continue to talk about the progress of this technology. Thank you very much. Thank you.